I'm going to be talking to you about designing your bathroom around your actual habits. This is something that people really do overlook and it is probably the most important part of design for you individually, but also if anyone out there is a designer, for you as a designer. So when I talk about habits, I'm not just talking about existing habits, I'm talking about aspirational habits, habits that you might wanna get rid of, and habits that you really wanna keep. So let's go through this. For any of you that haven't subscribed already, please subscribe to my channel. My name is Noor Chachevchi and I run an interior design practice. I'm also an ex-finance lawyer and a mummy of three. Okay, so first of all, I'm gonna to talk to you about habits that you already have and designing around those habits. And I'm gonna do that by talking to you about the three different zones in a bathroom, the shower. And for the shower area, what I would say is really know how you shower. And for some people, showering is an experience. You know, for me, it's a shower. I shower in and out. It means nothing more to me than that. I wanna be in and out as quickly as possible. I want to make sure I've got my essentials, my shampoo, my conditioner right by me, somewhere where they're within easy reach, and I wanna be able to leave ASAP. For my husband, on the other hand, he sees showering as an experience. He would like to have, you know, extra creams in there. He wants to have this, you know, almost steam experience in the shower. And, you know, I think, the difference there is being able to cater for both. We actually both use the same space. Being able to cater for both so that everybody has what they need in there. So for example, for him, I may add in a few candles, but I, I also need to know where I can put those candles for him to be able to use because of course, you know, just inside the shower doesn't work. I would need to create really easy niches for me to be able to reach to, to get my shampoo, conditioner, and then be able to walk out. But for him, somebody who may spend more time there, I might, for example, design in a bench where he can sit, he can relax, you know, he can actually use it as a steam therapy session instead of just shower in and out. So knowing what you do in that shower is important. Another thing that somebody who, for example, wants a longer experience in a shower could do with is music. In the bathroom in general, you could build in a music system so that you can allow for that experience. You know, that is many people's way of really unwinding. So really enabling that experience is super good for your health and is, you know, a really great habit to form perhaps even if you don't have it. So, you know, for me, although I'm an in and out shower girl, I would actually find the ability to switch the music on, maybe even the ability to have candles somewhere with an easy reach, a way to inspire better habits, a way to keep me in the shower a little bit longer, a way to teach me to unwind and to relax, which, you know, let's face it, stress is a big factor in lots of people's lives. So having that shower, having that unwinding session is really important, really healthy. And if you can inspire better habits and more of an experience through that, then, you know, that's fantastic. I had a client who wanted a rain shower and I couldn't understand it because rain showers are actually much softer than, you know, big power showers. And I'm a power shower girl. I want a big power shower and then I want to run out. Whereas this client wanted, you know, this very large rain waterfall shower and it costed a crazy amount of money, but you know, she was adamant, this is what she wanted. And for her, that was part of the experience, you know, to feel like she was at nature, she was at peace with herself. And you know, in hindsight, um, it would be a lovely thing to have, but knowing that, you know, you want to have that and you want to inspire that habit is a good way to be able to then build something like that in. You know, the power shower is probably gonna be for people who, you know, want the quick in and out um, or people who like a, a stronger massage. You know, that's the kind of, that's the kind of feeling you get with a power shower. But there's another lifestyle choice with showers. Um, and I'm gonna give you another example with my husband where he likes to have a really cold shower after the gym and, you know, this is now supposed to be something that's quite healthy. I'm sure there's a name for it. But, you know, having the ability to have that shower cool at a certain level is really important to him. So again, knowing what your habits are and what you might like is really important. So if you are somebody that likes to go to the gym, likes to exercise, maybe factor that in. You know, would you at some point, maybe not now, but in the future, would you like to have, you know, a freezing cold shower for, you know, I don't know, whatever it is, 20, 20, 30 seconds. Um, do consider it, do take your lifestyle into consideration. If you are somebody that 
likes to have a cold shower, either regularly or after going to the gym, then do make sure that when you have your plumbing done, that it is something your shower can get to the level of cool that you need it to be. Some showers will get very cool, but maybe not as quickly as you need them to be. So find out from a plumbing perspective whether it is possible and whether when you're changing from hot to cold, whether it will get to where you need it to be quickly enough. I guess it depends what system you have because some of them take longer to warm up, some of them take longer to cool down. But if you want it really fast, you know, I think that's the problem. If you want to be able to switch on and have it immediately quick because actually you've got a routine and you want to be in line with that routine, presumably you want to get it cold really quickly. So making sure you can get it cold really quickly is important. If you're someone whose habit is to require a really fast shower, like mine is, with a demanding routine, you may want to have a power shower and the ability to build that into your actual system. So, you know, to source yourself a really great power shower that allows you to be in and out really quickly. Or alternatively, you may want to retain the habit of seeing the shower as an experience and therefore being able to have a rain shower or a waterfall shower, something that emulates the natural rain and therefore gives you that more gentle experience and that ability to reinforce your you know, slightly more relaxed and experienced type of shower. The loo, the actual toilet. By the way, I am um, in England and in England we call the toilet the loo, so I'm gonna talk about loo and toilet interchangeably. Please excuse me if you're not English, um, but we do use loo and toilet in very much the same way. Okay, so when you are on the loo, are you a phone user? Are you a magazine reader? I am both. So for example, I would have ideally just by the loo, a little pedestal table so that I could put down my phone, my magazine, and potentially even sometimes, and yes, I'm going to admit it, sometimes I might even have my morning coffee there. I know it's a lot, but <laughs> so having this little pedestal table just by me is super important and would change my life completely. Having said that, you may want to be someone that wants to stop using the telephone when you're in the loo because actually, you know, you use the phone too much and you get distracted and you don't sleep on time if, for example, it's in the evening, um, which does happen to me. So I go to the loo before I go to bed and then, of course, I start swirling through my phone and I pretend that I still need the loo, but in actual fact, I'm just flipping through my phone. If you want to get rid of that habit, maybe don't design in a space for your telephone. You know, don't have it in there. So this isn't just about keeping habits that you already have. It's also about getting rid of habits that you don't really want to have anymore. But also, that little pedestal table could inspire your reading habit. So for example, if there is a book that you really want to read, you know, have that book on that table by you so that, you know, it does inspire you to pick it up and actually read it and get through it. So there are ways that you can inspire yourself to do better and to create better habits. That little table can also improve your water drinking habits. I am a particularly bad water drinker. I never drink any water and I can't stand water. I know it's super unhealthy. So just inspiring better habits is a really good thing. Finally, and I've saved the best for last, is the vanity area. Now so much goes on in this area and there is so much habits that already exist that you're reinforcing and habits that you may want to inspire yourself to execute. Firstly, if you are a female, are you using this as your main space for makeup? And even if it's not your main space for makeup, are you using it as your space for makeup? Do you walk in here and do your makeup? Up every day or whenever it is that you do your makeup and always do it in a specific area requiring a certain mirror and certain amount of light. You want to get as close to daylight as possible. So if you've got lights facing you, they're going to want to be a slightly different warmth to the lights over your head as the spotlight. So if you've got lights facing you and you can get them as close to 5,500 as possible, that is the closest to daylight. However, lamp bulbs are generally around 3,000 Kelvin. So you've got to try, try and find an in-between to get as close as you can to daylight if this is where you're doing your main makeup. On the same note, just touching on lighting, and I know this is nothing to do with the vanity itself, but in terms of habit forming, you may be somebody that wakes up a lot at night to go to the loo or even once or twice to go to the loo. If you do wake up at all in the middle of the night, 
what you don't want is to walk into your bathroom and have that really bright daylight Kelvin that we're talking about for your makeup that just immediately comes on when you're in the loop. A cooler light, of course, can trigger your body to completely wake up. So you really don't want that and you really want to have a light that's much more dim um, and warm so that you can easily get back to sleep. Okay, so back to vanities. Staying with that makeup vibe, the other thing that you may have um, as a female or a male actually is a hairdryer in your bathroom. And if you do have a hairdryer in your bathroom and you dry your hair in the bathroom after a shower because you don't want to leave because it might be too cold, then you need to have places to store your hairdryer. So again, this is going to inform the design of your vanity area, you will need to know how much space you need. You might have a bulky hairdryer and six brushes. So you need to know that you've got that and that's something that you do regularly do in the bathroom. And if you want to keep doing that, then allow for it in terms of space. If you are a man, you may want to have shaving sockets, of course, in the bathroom. And this is something that most people do think about. It's not often forgotten, but do keep it in mind because you do need to know where you'll be standing if you are a man and where you want to be standing and that you have a mirror just by you so that you've got everything you need by that shaving section. You also need to know the kind of habits that you already have when it comes to, you know, just general washing, washing your face, washing your hands. Where does the soap need to go? Where would you like it to go? Do you want it to be concealed? Do you splash? Are you a big splasher? Are you gonna need a larger basin because you are a splasher or your partner or other half is a splasher and mine is. I personally around the vanity area like to go in soon after I've had a shower and I then do my makeup. But actually, of course, the problem with that is the bathroom is steamy. And not only does my hair get ruined because, you know, my curls all drop as they've done now, but also the mirrors are steamy. So do you need to consider buying a steamless mirror? I am a terrible pill taker. I need to take my vitamins every day and I always forget. And people have told me to put the pill bottle by the kettle in the morning, but frankly, I can't take um, a pill after a hot cup of tea or even before. So what I like to do is have my bottle of pills just by my basin and then have a glass of water there. I wash my face and then I can stack a habit thereafter and keep my bottle of pills and a glass of water. Okay, so in summary, this video has been all about designing around your existing habits. Do take your daily lifestyle into consideration, but not just yours, the person that's using this master bathroom with you. You know, you may be using it on your own, you may have someone visiting, or you may be living with somebody who needs to use the space as well. How do you use that space together? What habits do you both have? And what habits do you want to maintain? But also, potentially, what habits would you like to inspire with your new bathroom design? You've got this incredible new opportunity to design around your actual habits, your actual lifestyle, and this bonus opportunity to design around your inspirational habits, things that you actually want to do. So don't waste this opportunity, use it. And if you have not subscribed already, please do hit that button. This is your last chance.